Hi guys, thanks for tuning in in the fourth video of our Controlino tutorial video series. My name is Ivan and you probably already know me from the last three videos. In this video we'll talk about how to use the input pins of Controlino. So not only the pin headers but also the screw terminal inputs. So yeah, let's unpack our Controlinos, start up our Lino IDE and let's get started. The Controlino input pins that you see right here are clearly labeled on the top of Controlino. So here it says input. Also, of course, the number of these input pins differs. So depending on what Controlino you have, you have more or less of these inputs. All input pins start usually with an A letter, A0, A1, A2, A3, and so on. They can be used for either analog or digital input. On some Controlinos like the Mega, there are also pins that start with an I letter, not to, get, not to get confused with these guys over here, because what these are, we'll talk about later. So on the Mega, these pins that start with an I letter are pins that can only be used as digital input. Of course, we also have our regular 5 volt pin headers over here with its input pins, as you know them from any standard Arduino, but more on that later. First, let's talk about the screw terminal pins right here. So as we said before, the input pins are labeled with A0, A1, and so on, and they can be used as either analog or digital input. This will be set in the Arduino code itself that we will also see later. All input pins are also protected against electrostatic discharging and overvoltages. So now let's assume we have set these guys as analog input now and connected some analog based sensor like, I don't know, a joystick. Then the internal AD converter of the microcontroller with a resolution of 10 bit will deliver the value 0 to 1023 to our code. Controlino internally uses an automatic voltage divider controlled over the supply voltage. So depending on the supply voltage, the divider is switched to the right value. Now, if we use a 12 volt supply like we use right now, the measured value can be between 0 and 15.3 volts approximately. So one digit here is 0.015 volts or 15 millivolts. If you use a 24 volt supply voltage, the measured value can be between 0 and 30.7 volts. So one digit in this case is 0.03 volts or uh, 30 millivolts. That's about it for analog. Now let's assume we have set one of these for as a digital input. So our program code would either give us 0 or 1 as an output. This will also be indicated by the corresponding LEDs as you can see here on the top of the Controlino. So you can always check the status of the pin very quickly. It's also nice to use this feature as a quick diagnostics or bug fixing measure, or at least that's how many guys are using it. The logic levels are of course also different depending on what we supply the Controlino with. So for 12 volt logic 0 will be from 0 to 3.6 volt and logic 1 will be from 9 to 13.2 volt. For 24 volt, however, logic 0 will be from 0 to 7.2 volt and logic 1 from 18 to 26.4 volts. Also, additionally to the normal analog and digital inputs, Controlino also has interrupt pins, as you can see here, interrupt inputs. These inputs are capable of measuring very fast and important switching operations. Interrupts in general can be useful for making things happen automatically in microcontroller programs and help some timing and help solve some timing problems. The electrical behavior is like a normal digital input, but the user program can execute subroutines when the input level changes. Okay, now let's jump back to the 5 volt pin headers that we have on top of our Controlino and talk about them for a moment. These are the ones you will find in any standard Arduino and um, there you can just use the normal uh, 5 volt sensors. This means that you can connect stuff with mixed voltages running on your board. For example, on the pin header A0 right here, oh, sorry, right here, I can connect, I don't know, something with 5 volt and in the screw terminal here on A1, I can connect something with, I don't know, 12 volts, for example. This can be very useful. Just one thing is important to know, you cannot use the same pin twice. So if I plug in here in A0, 
something and here also on A0 it will not work. So you really have to keep one pin per connection or one voltage per connection. So here A0, I plug in some 5 volt, then I would plug in on A1 something else. This is just how it works. So that's about it uh, about the input pins of the Controlino. I think now it's a great time to do some wiring and programming. So let's just plug out our sensors. Here we have a 12 volt proximity sensor. This one works with 12 volts to 48 volts, I think. Let me check. Yeah. And this is the one that we will connect, for example, here on A1. Now, don't get confused by the colors of this thing. It's actually quite confusing. The black one is not ground. It's actually the signal connection. Blue is ground and this one is 12 volts. So super strange. I thought myself too. So yeah, just don't get confused about it. Let's just wire it up. Okay, now let's plug this in into ground. Okay. Now, this one goes to this guy over here. As you can see, we get 12 volts and ground here. And now the signal input. Just hit it. Awesome. Okay. Connection stable. Awesome. What we have here now is a joystick, as you know, from RC airplanes. Probably know them already. And as you can see, we've already wired it up here on our nice pin header connectors that you can get in our online shop. They're quite nice, actually, as you can always keep a nice connection, a very stable connection, and just plug in the wires, press down these orange things, and then it's very stable and very robust. Okay, so this one is already wired here to 5 volts to ground and on this little pin to a zero. Okay, now let's just plug it in, put it over here and that's it. Here we have our connection and now I think it's time to do some programming. Okay, so here we go. I've created a new sketch in Arduino IDE. And now let's start with including the Controlino library. This library allows you to use the pin aliases, for example, Controlino underline A0 and stuff like that. So yeah, this is quite useful. So we'll include this one. We will see um, soon how it works. So now I'm creating our setup function as always and initialize the input pins. Now I will use Controlino a0 as an input pin and Controlino A1 also as an input pin. Here you see what I mean, why we use the Controlino library, because it makes us use the normal pin numbers very easily. And of course we need zero begin at a baud rate of 9600. That's about it for the setup. And now let's create our loop function where we will first read the analog value of the joystick. So in the analog value is analog read Controlino A0. So we've connected it right there. Also, we will read the digital value of our proximity sensor. Okay, so in digital value is digital read Controlino A1. Okay, now I think we are already done and now we just have to print these values. Okay, so I'll just do a serial print. Let's call it joystick value analog so that we can read it a bit better. Then Zero print analog value. Then let's create another little text so that we can see it also a little bit better in serial monitor. Proximity value digital is so let's create a new line here. 
it's the digital value. We'll also add a little bit of delay right here so that in between reads we have more stability. Okay, now I'll hit save and now we can upload it to our Controlino. Okay, so now we have wired up everything, serial monitor is running and as you can see here, when I'm starting to move the analog stick, it shows me the analog value change. So awesome, seems like it works great. Now what we will do is we'll take this one over here and we'll just put it to some metal as you can see right here. Also, the LED is working, as you can see. This one also has an internal LED integrated, which is quite nice. And as you can see in serial monitor, the value changes. Awesome. Well, that's it for this project. So, let me just jump back to the code a little quick before we finish this video, because I have a special tip for you. These special tips we will also publish in the next few videos where you, for example, can learn how to utilize your Controlino even a little bit better or tell you some functions that you most probably don't know about and stuff like that. So in this case, the special tip goes as follows. Essentially, you can turn any analog input from Controlino into a digital one with just a few lines of code. And I'll show you how it works. It's pretty easy. For example, let's say we want to turn the A0 input into a digital one. I would just declare a variable called um, my digital input. And now I'll make a little if loop. For example, if analog value, the one over here, is over 133, I'll tell you in a second what this means, then my digital input is high or 1. Else, my digital input is zero. So what I have done here, here you see I've entered the value 133. And this is just the digit that I will get when I plug in something to A0 and the voltage level reaches two volts or higher. If you remember from the video before, I can explain you what this means because when I, for example, put in a 12 volt supply, I've entered the 12 volt supply into the Controlino, then zero is, let me just make a comment of it, zero is 0, 0.0 volts, okay? Then if I would get one, then it would be 0 0.015 volts. If I get two, it would be 0 0.01, uh, 0 0.30 volts, okay? And so on. So. These steps or these digits right here, I will get out of my code. It's from 0 to 1023. And each digit represents, when I enter a 12 volt supply, 0 0.015 volts. So 133 digits is something around 2 volts. And 2 volts is, according to TTL logic levels, the logic levels 1, so high for 5 volt inputs. So everything that will go over 2 volts in a 5 volt circuit is considered a high based on TTL logic levels. So if the analog value shows me more than 2 volts, then my digital input will turn to 1 and otherwise it will turn to 0. This is for example for a 5 volt sensor. Now let's say I use a 12 volt sensor. In Controlino's case, the logic level 1 for 12 volt inputs is triggered after 9 volts. So I can calculate this and I would get out 600. So the digit 600 or higher from my analog value that I read is just representing 9 volts or higher. Okay. So in this case, this would be used, for example, if I have something that I need to trigger or control with 12 volts, some 12 volt input. Where, where I get a zero, either one. So yeah, that's it for the special tip. And that's also it now for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I know this time it was pretty long, um, but there is a lot to say about the input functionality of Controlino. In the next video, we will do everything about outputs and also use our circuit that we've created today. We have the joystick to control some motors and we'll add some motors and show you um, what cool stuff you can do with outputs. So that's it guys. If you have any feedback for the video, just put it in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching and see you next time.